Sierra Nevada is one of the oldest microbreweries in the United States. For its 2018 Oktoberfest rendition, the company partnered with Weihensteffen, the oldest brewery in the world, to make what it calls an American take on the German Oktoberfest classic. But is it worthy of your beer money? Find out now on Two Dudes Reviews. What up, guys? Yeah, today we have Sierra Nevada's Oktoberfest. Now, this they did this in conjunction. I probably already did this in the introduction. In maybe, I don't know. Don't listen to what I'm saying. They did this in conjunction with uh, Bayern Steffen's brewery out of, out of uh, Bavaria in Germany. And so, if you're gonna get an American uh, Oktoberfest, you might as well go do it with a beer that's paired with the oldest brewery in the world. So, that's actually what uh, stopped me and I, the, I took notice. That's why I picked it up. But anyways, I'll crack it open. Um, so, while I'm pouring this, if you want to check out the, uh, subscribe to the Instagram channel, that'd be awesome. I kind of preview the beers that I'm going to review, and you'll get a heads up on all that stuff, so you'll know what's coming down the pipe, and all that good things. Um, as I'm pouring this, for some reason, the Oktoberfest beers, for me, seem to be the ones that I accidentally kind of miss that the time period. Because actually these Oktoberfest beers are sandwiched so close in between other seasonals. You know, you have these summer beers that last pretty much through the, through the end of August. Maybe trickling into September, depending on where you live. And then you're going to start getting the pumpkin um, beers mid-October. Maybe earlier, maybe the beginning of October. And you'll have like the, the fall seasonals that trickle into the winter seasonals. So Oktoberfest, they have basically three to four weeks. That's it. And so it's a very limited time for a seasonal beer. So you kind of, and it's really a, a jumping off point from your lighter summer beers, your shandies, your really super light wheats, those that, that do the goza beers, sours, whatever is really jump I mean, you're jumping off the deep end from that to an Oktoberfest. But anyway, so that's that. But anyways, let's get in the review and check out the smell. Arg is sticking to glass. I'm picking up zero aroma. I'm not kidding. I, I don't smell a damn thing. I feel like, I feel like that's the thing where like the old tiny movies where you're looking at, you know, through the bottle and just pfft. Yeah, I don't smell anything, man. I'm sure there's a little bit there. I'm not getting a whole lot of any kind of aroma to it, um, so I guess I can't really review the aroma. It doesn't smell bad or good, so I'm gonna give it a middle. Um, anyways, let's hopefully I can taste it, so let's get into the taste. There we go, there's taste to it. Thank God, I thought I was drinking air, or smelling air. We brew in Chico, California and Mills Roof, North Carolina. What do you guys feel about the, the microbreweries that brew in two, in two different locations? Do you think it, uh, you know, I, I sometimes wonder if the taste will vary based on the brewery that it comes from. You know, this is, Sierra Nevada is one of the like old school staple microbreweries in the United States, starting up in 1980. That's really when the first very, like the early 80s is when you know, when everyone was high on cocaine, they're like, let's start a brewery. Yeah, it's a good idea. So you probably, you know, that's when, you know, you got your Sam Adams. I think Bell's out of Michigan was really early, the 80s. You got Sierra Nevada. Um, so you have like those handful of old staples. So I guess, I mean, it makes it cheaper to distri uh, distribute on the East Coast when you open up something in North Carolina. But I sometimes wonder, it's like, 
does that kind of reduce? Because you're standardizing the entire brewery process. I wonder if that kind of takes some of the creativity out or, if, you know, it just kind of, uh, I don't know. So I'm sure more microbreweries do that than I know of, but you know, whatever. But anyways, back to the uh, taste, random tangents. <laughs> You know, it's kind of a, a bit of a brown ale, a little nutty. No bitterness to it. There's almost like a little tail end creamy thing going on. A hint of that. There's really no, no spice going on. That's why I like the winter beers that have almost an Oktoberfest taste to it, but a um, kind of holiday spice thing going on. But that combination is always great for me. I love, I love that. But no spice. It's just kind of uh, nutty. Now it's not heavy, not bitter. A little cream at the end. It's okay. Um, I guess I was. Ex I'm gonna have to get the Vine stuff in Oktoberfest to kind of compare it. I mean, they, they've kind of dubbed this as the Americanized uh, German Oktoberfest, which the Americanized to me meant uh, we're just gonna make it bitter as hell. Boom! In your face. Um, but. Yeah, for an American take on the classic German October. I don't really, uh, I don't know what I'm getting. It, it just kind of tastes like a your standard brown ale. There's not, a, you know. It tastes fine. I mean, don't get me wrong. You can pull up to a bar and you order it. You'll be, you know, especially at like a sports bar, you don't want something like super heavy where you know you can, I can kind of keep going with this. And this is 6% alcohol, so it's a little stronger but than your average general beer. But yeah, I mean, it tastes fine. I haven't had a, you know, Oktoberfest haven't had in a year. And this is the first one I've, I've sampled. Man, excuse me. This is the first one I've like sampled so far this year. And I mean, it's fine. I, I work on, on taste, it, it, you know, it, it tastes fine. It didn't wow me, which I felt, sadly, I feel like I felt that over the last several Sierra Nevada beers that I've had. Sierra Nevada is not like my go-to, but it's one of those, you know, it's an established microbrewery that you always feel kind of safe. If you look at beers and you, or you're at just kind of like a, a bar where they don't really do the micro stuff, you see Sierra Nevada, you feel like, okay, you know, I can go with that. The, the stuff's usually fine. But the last couple ones I've had from them, I was kind of been a little disappointed. Especially, I feel like last year with their uh, their winter season, that's always one I look forward to. One of the Christmas through the tree, it's usually like a white label with like, you know, like red, and it's got a Christmas through a tree. It's a different tree every year in the, in the middle. Last, it was disappointed with that one too. So, I don't know. Not, I'm not disappointed, I mean, it tastes fine, but I'm a little let down. I guess I was expecting more. I'm not to, hopefully that's not a trend, but I don't know. It's fine, I'll recommend on taste. This is the most ho-hum recommendation you'll get. But all right, value for price. You know what Sierra Nevada costs. It's it's your standard uh, micro beer price. It, the price should have, honestly, it should have gone down when they opened that second brewery in North Carolina because they, you don't, distribution is probably just cut in half then. North Carolina's got East Coast, one California's got West Coast. So you'd think if you lived on one of the coastlines, especially on the East Coastline or the Midwest, whatever, you'd think the price would go down. I don't know, has it? Has any of you guys that live on the East Coast known as the price for Sierra Nevada going down? Because it should have, because you're not paying as much for the beer to come to you. So, price should have gone down, if I didn't, you know how, cap, you know, uh, capitalism. I don't know, is that capitalism? I don't know. The price probably hasn't gone down even though it should have. So, um, 
Yeah, fine. I'll work my on value price. It is what it is. You know what zero matter is going to cost. It's gonna, uh, this did, wasn't any different than you know anything else. Um, next category is drinkability. Yeah, drinkability is fine. It tastes fine. It's honestly, you get more water taste than I was kind of hoping. I thought, but you know, I don't know. I haven't had a ton of Blacktoberfests in the last year or so, so maybe I'm just uh, maybe I'm just waiting for those heavier seasonals to kick in. So drinkability, yeah, you could crush this without a problem. Distinction, uh, not really. I guess when I saw that they partnered with uh, Bai and Stefan, Bai and Stefan to me, they have the best, possibly the best wheat beer, period. It's the unfiltered, uh, I don't know, it's a very long German word that I'm not thinking of right now, but the unfiltered, uh, cloudy um, wheat beer from Bai and Stefan is to me, I mean, it's it's like perfection. It is as good of a wheat beer that you will ever have. And I'm a big Belgian, I mean, I will take Belgian beers over German beers simply because Belgian's got more variety and I love a great Belgian wheat. I will drink a Belgian wheat during the summer pretty much over any other of these summer beers. But by and Stefan, they, to me, they might have the very best wheat beer, period. Um, and I got a review on that somewhere. So nobody watches the buying stuff in reviews. <laughs> um, but, so I guess I was expecting a little more from this. Because you have one of the oldest here, I mean, one of the old school microbreweries in the United States, plus the oldest brewery in the world. And, so I'm not going to recommend it on distinction. There's nothing that it's like, oh, wow, this is a, yeah, this is a great collab. Like, no. Nah. I feel like they just kind of paid so they could slap their, their sticker on their label. That's probably what the that's what collaboration is. We'll pay you a lot of money. Just let us throw your label on. And, yeah. So anyways, the uh, last category is would I buy it again? And I'm not, probably not. I would just keep the buying stuff in, uh, Oktoberfest instead of this. I mean, it's Oktoberfest. Get a freaking German beer. I should be yelling at, I'm yelling at myself through the camera. Why am I getting an American beer for a, a German thing? Oktoberfest, it takes place in September. And sadly, I feel like a lot of people that do the, like the festivals, I don't know if they just don't realize that, because so many of them actually take place in October. And then you tell them that they're a month late, like, but it's Oktoberfest. I don't know. I don't want to tell you, man. It's September. It's in September. But that is one of that is one of the beer pilgrimages I need to do. The Oktoberfest. Plop down on one of those giant wood picnic tables with all the beer, get my sausages, and my. I'm gonna have to train to be able to drink like all those big old liter glasses. But. Uh, um, Anyways, yeah, so I, uh, I won't be buying it again. But anyway, so that is my review of Sierra Nevada's Oktoberfest. It's kind of the uh, whole hum. It, the, the beer tastes fine. There's nothing terrible about it. It's just when you see that the labels, you expect more from it. Maybe that's unfair. I don't think it is. And so I'd say just go, if, you, if it's between that and the regular mind stuff, and just go with the regular. Mind. With the original Coke, not new Coke. So, anyways, yeah, that's the review for uh, Sierra Nevada Oktoberfest. Like, subscribe, do whatever. Dogs are visiting. But, anyways, yeah, so for myself and the beer, take it easy.